Welcome to the Nokia Optical Networking Learning Essentials video series from the Nokia Optical Network Certification Program, an end-to-end -end learning program supporting Nokia 1830 PSS, PSI, VWM, NFMT, and WaveSuite-based networks. In this video, we will show you optical network design with backplane switching. This video has been created based on the Nokia Advanced Optical Network Design course. Due to the constant network evolution, proper network design has become essential to the network planning process. The planning process is a continuous circular process that involves integration between financial and engineering activities to guarantee the final results. In support of the eight-step process proposed for network design, the Engineering and Planning Tool, or EPT, lets you design a network throughout its entire life cycle. The tool manages photonic transport layers based on the 1830 PSS portfolio. In the Fundamentals of Optical Network Design course, we learn how to consider cost and availability in the network design. However, additional requirements must be considered, such as traffic growth, physical layer performance, and reliability, which is discussed in the Advanced Optical Network Design course. For instance, a network can be optimized for coherent signals and optimized for 100G channels and above, but 10G client signals might also be required to be transported end-to-end. -end. So techniques like grooming and cascading can be useful in network design to reduce the number of wavelengths used per link and increase the transport performances thanks to the coherent signal. For example, many low-rate services can be found in metro and access networks. By grooming them through backplane switching boards, these services can be tunneled into 100G coherent wavelengths, simplifying the core network design. Today, we'll demonstrate the optical backplane switching mechanism in a lab exercise using the Engineering and Planning Tool, or EPT. In particular, we will use 20P200 input-output cards, made it together with 1UD200 optical transponders. This is possible thanks to a 400G backplane connection available on PSS-16-2 and PSS-8 shelves. Next, we'll complete the following lab exercise using EPT. Let's start by opening the EPT application where we've already defined our network's optical sites and segments. Then, we'll create the associated trails over the 200G ring. First, we'll right-click on the source node and select Create Trail. Then, click on the destination node. A window will open where we can define the type of trail. In this window, we can select the trail's supporting board, the rate, and the protection level desired. Then, the same must be done for the other three trails on the ring. The trail definition should look like this. When done, click on the Run Design button, selecting the option Do not remove any designed elements, so that the existing resources are kept and only the additional hardware is included. Once the process is completed, we can create the ring protection with the two boards mentioned before, that is, 1UD200 and 20P200. Let's go to the Trails tab, select the involved trails, and right-click on the selection. Then we can click on Create Ring and define the card count field as four card ADMs for two line and two client board pairs. It's now time to define the services for the ring by right-clicking on the source node and selecting Create Service. Then on the destination node. For the 10G 1 plus 1 eSNCP protected services, we will use the 20P200 in client mode. Finally, we'll compute the design again. The new service can be verified with the card view function. Here, we can see the schematic view of the backplane switching, represented by connections BP1 and BP2. They are between the pair 1UD200 and 20P200. 
If the main route reports a failure, the data traffic can be switched through the backplane connections towards the spare route so that the ESNCP electronically protects the service. Now that the services have been set up, we can verify the equipment footprint in the NEs tab by right-clicking on Equipment View. As we can see, all nodes use PSS-16-2 shelves, which support the backplane switch and have a space footprint compared to other shelf types. Let's summarize what we've learned today. Network planning is a continuous process in which each network has its own optical solution depending on their requirements and some constraints. The network design process involves many calculations. A design tool can simplify this process and minimize the risk of errors. By using grooming techniques, network usage is improved. Fewer wavelengths are needed, and coherent transmission increases the overall network performance. Backplane switching enables traffic grooming by connecting the two relevant cards via the shelf backplane to bundle low-rate services into high-capacity channels. Backplane switching is not only cost-efficient, but also improves resilience to failures, and several survivability techniques can be implemented on top of this construct so that the traffic is protected. Thanks for watching, and look for more videos in our Optical Networking Learning Essential series. Whether your goal is to enhance your optical networking skills or demonstrate your expertise through one of four industry recognized certifications, the Optical Network Certification Program is here to get you, your career, and your organization on the right path. Our program features 10 instructor led courses developed by our team of subject matter experts using industry best practices, use case driven examples, and hands on labs. Learn more and get started today by visiting our website. Thank you.